Howdy, my name is Thomas Rokicki, and I'm going to describe how to solve the problem Reset. The problem Reset is a lot like Groundhog Day. You've got a set of tasks to complete. If you don't manage to complete those tasks in a given number of seconds, then time is reset and you get to try again. But you can research a task. If you research a task, the time required to complete it is decreased and that reduction carries forward to the next day. You can only research a task once, one second each day. So this question asks, what's the minimum number of resets you must endure in order to complete all the tasks? We have n tasks up to 200,000. Each attempt is c seconds, which is up to a billion. T sub i, which is the time required for each task initially, is between one and a billion. And the amount of time required for each task, that's every time you research it, it's decreased, is d sub i. And that ranges from one to a billion. In particular, note that d sub i is one or greater. So doing research will always decrease the time required for a task. The final result might be as high as 2 times 10 to the 14th. This happens when we maximize n and the t sub i's and when we minimize c and the t sub i's. So we need to use long longs here. Our overall strategy is going to be a binary search on the final result. And the way we do this is we write a query function that, given a number k, determines whether you can actually complete all the tasks using the first k days for research and then finish the remaining research in tasks in the last day. This function is clearly monotonic because if we can do it with k resets, we can do it with k plus one resets. It doesn't hurt to add another day. On the other hand, if we can't do it with k resets, we cannot also do it with k minus 1 resets because subtracting a day will only hurt you. Further, the result is clearly finite since we can always eventually research every task down to zero. So in this case, we know we can use binary search. How do we know what tasks to research on a given day? Well, one way might be to use a greedy approach, in which case we simply take the task that's reduced the most amount on that day and research that task, and then the next most amount and can you continue along and repeat that. Unfortunately, this doesn't always give us a minimal schedule, and I've got an example here with three tasks and two second days that shows why this is the case. We've got two hard tasks, but a one second research will reduce those tasks to zero. And then we've got a third task, which normally takes six seconds, but research decreases it by two seconds each time. If we're greedy and we research the two hard tasks on the first day, we still need two additional days to research the third task, followed by a last day to complete the, the task. So this totals four days. On the other hand, if we research the first and third task on the first day, the second and third task on the second day, then we can finish the third task and all of them on that third day. So we only need two resets. So greedy is not going to solve this problem. So what will? So I'm gonna present a solution and the solution has got two parts. The first part is we're going to show that we have sufficient time. And then we're gonna show that given that sufficient time, we can always find a schedule that works. What do I mean when I say sufficient time? The following two things. First of all, the total effort required has to fit in the total number of days allotted. Remember, we're asking this for a given K number of days. Secondly, the total effort required on the last day must fit in that last day. It turns out if both of these conditions are satisfied, then there exists a schedule of research and work that completes all the tasks. If these constraints are not satisfied, then there cannot be such a schedule. Nama clincher, we call a task hard if it cannot be researched down to zero time in K days 
and easy otherwise. So let's look at the first constraint. What is the total required effort? So I'm assuming we're going to do K research days plus a last day. And we assume that each task can be researched therefore a maximum of K plus one times because of course we can research on the last day. For any individual task, we can set, we can determine how many days we can research it. It's the minimum of K plus one or the ceiling of the duration of the task divided by the amount it's decreased by each research day. That is the amount of days we can research this task if we assume that we do K research days. Then after that, that research is done, we're left with a certain amount of additional work. It might be zero for each task and we call that W sub i. And we can calculate that by subtracting from T sub i the number of days we do research times the amount of decrease each task uh, decreases by one day of research. Uh, we have to maximize that at zero because it's possible things don't divide evenly and we may go negative. So that's what the max, max cut is in there for. So the total effort we call E is the sum of R, R sub i and W sub i for all these tasks. Remember each research unit takes one second of time. Any schedule that uses K research days plus the last day must do at least this much work. There is no way by doing less research or scheduling things differently that you can decrease the duration of work that's required overall. So if the total effort E is greater than K plus one times C, which is the total effort available, then there isn't enough time in the days to actually do the work. Now let's look at the last day. So again, let's look at the hard tasks first. The easy tasks, we know we can research them down to zero in the previous days. So for the easy tasks, we don't actually need to do anything in the last days. But for the hard tasks, which are the tasks that we must do at least something on the last day, um, we have to take that into account. So what we do is, how much work do we need to do for a hard task on the last day? Well, it's just one for research plus W sub i. Remember, W sub i is leftover work. So the sum of that value, one plus W of i, for all the hard tasks is equal to something we called L. And this L must be less than or equal to C because otherwise we can't do the remaining work on the last day. So no schedule can, can exist that works. So if either one of these two constraints is violated, we can return false. There's no possible schedule. We need to go to a larger K value. Otherwise, it turns out we can always make a schedule. Now, the problem doesn't actually require us to make a, such a schedule, but we only know our solution actually works if we can prove such a schedule exists. So in your solution program, if both the constraints are satisfied, just return true. But Let's prove that this works. Let's see what such a schedule would look like. So to make this schedule, what we do is first we schedule all the hard tasks. We know we need to do research on every single day for those tasks, and we know there may be leftover work in the last day for those tasks. So we just go ahead and fill that in for the relevant days. Then we're left with just the easy tasks. The total effort required still fits somehow in the remaining slots, and we're going to show how. We haven't wasted any slots yet. Scheduling theory tells us we can always find a schedule in this situation, but let's, let's step through how. Our first thing is to fill up the last day. We have some number of slots left in the last day. Maybe none, but there's some number. We call this x. So. This number is always going to be less than or equal to the available slots in the previous day because um, the way we filled out the hard tasks, we always put more effort, the same amount or more effort in the last day than we did in the previous day. Therefore, the remaining effort in the last day is always going to be less than or equal to the remaining effort in the prior days. Now, if the total number of easy tasks is less than X, we're basically done. We simply go ahead and schedule out each easy task fully um, starting on the first day and continuing on to the last till however many days it takes and that's guaranteed to fit in all the previous days. 
Otherwise, we have a lot of easy tasks and we need to figure out how to squeeze them in that last day and the prior days. So we pick any subset of them, x, any subset of size x, and assign one second of research for those tasks to the last day, completely filling the last day with effort, with no waste. And we reduce the R sub i for those tasks by one. Now we're left with some number of easy tasks. Each of them have less than or equal to k remaining days of research that need to be done. In addition, for every day we have some amount of research effort available, and that's just c minus the number of hard tasks. We know that the total amount of research unscheduled is less than y times k since we haven't wasted any slots yet, and our overall effort constraint was satisfied. If the total task count is less than or equal to this y, then just like before, we just scheduled each task to occur, research for each task to occur in the next remaining days, and we're done. Otherwise, we pick the y task with the greatest amount of remaining research effort and schedule one unit of work for those tasks on this day. There are going to be at most y of those tasks with r sub i is equal to k because otherwise the total remaining work would be greater than c times k. So we, can, we know we can reduce all the tasks that require k more research days by one. And then we can also reduce some additional tasks. We decrement the r sub i's for tasks with scheduled work in this day, fill them in the slots, and move on to the next day. After scheduling a given day, we have one fewer day left. So after scheduling day one or day k, it doesn't really matter, we have k minus one days left and every r sub i is less than or equal to k minus one and the total unscheduled work is less than y times k minus one. So basically we're back to a smaller version of the previous problem. So clearly this works. This gives you a schedule that works. The overall complexity well, the time required to answer each query is O sub n. We just simply walk through the queries, through the tasks, calculated the R sub i and W sub i for each, determined whether it was an easy or hard task, and allocated effort to the total effort, and also allocated effort to the last day, and then checked those constraints. Since this is the inner loop of a binary search, we performed at most logarithm of n queries, so for a total complexity is n log n. Interestingly, we never needed to sort. Typically in scheduling problems, you sort. Here we don't sort. This problem can also be solved in linear time by performing a quick select type algorithm. And what happens here is we do the binary search as before, but as we do the binary search, we divide the tasks into easy and hard. And once a task is permanently put into the easy slot, or the hard slot, it remains there and we no longer need to reconsider. We just consider the overall accumulation of values from those easy and hard tasks. But that wasn't required to solve this problem. So I hope you enjoyed this problem. I found it interestingly subtle for such a simple statement. That is all.